I think shifts in consumption of media usually occur as a result of technological innovations of some kind. You know, human beings do this to themselves every few years. What's interesting now, I think, is that the space between those inventions is compressing so that the adoption curves are occurring much more quickly, they're overlapping, and it creates more disruption and chances for challengers to take over from incumbents. There was a period of time when most people get their content from Google. Google became essentially a navigation tool. But Facebook and Twitter have kind of eclipsed Google in terms of where people actually today get their content from. We've evolved from the purely personal to the humorous sort of pure social content to content that has an emotional core but also uh, has, has informational value and news value. As that shift has happened, BuzzFeed has also evolved. There's a, a sort of full spectrum, which is that consumers now are used to going to Facebook and seeing cute kittens, updates about their friends, a story about the Arab Spring, all in one feed, all mixed together, and are increasingly making that their start page, not, um, not a traditional media site as their, as their start page on the web. You know, I believe that there is now and will always be a market for trusted, horizontally appealing content of the kind, you think New York Times news coverage or Disney movies. What's different and what's changing is the way that content gets disassembled, delivered, and distributed. So the old content models, I think, have a real role in the new world. The old distribution models, less so. Because we're getting news from all these different places. And what Pulse tries to kind of focus on is, is the mobile consumption and, and the ability to kind of bring all these different news sources in one place. So if, as a user, you don't have to go to 10 different apps or, or 10 different websites. Pulse brings all of that great content that you have chosen in one place in one app. I think the design is what has actually helped us get to where we are. Uh, you know, it was a small class project about 18 months ago, and now we have an excess of 13 million users. And I think if there's one thing that's really driven the growth, that's been the design. In a world of multiple screens, you think of how you create content in a completely different way, right? It's not just about the linear content on television. You have to think about on demand. You have to think about the social engagement. You have to think of the games you're building. You have to think of uh, what you're going to do if there is an experience to be had while I'm watching the show on my iPad, all those things. So there is a need to create a very simple and immersive way of, of discovering content, kind of what, what you would do on your television by just turning the television on and flipping through channels. We think of Manhattan as a service first, and the goal for us is to be present wherever consumers are going to actually access or look for movies and TV shows. Not only are technology models changing, but business models are changing too. Subscription, pay-per-view, ad-supported. For example, a company like our portfolio company, Millennial, which just went public, is leading the way in providing technology tools for all the mobile application developers to monetize all the free applications we want to see on our phone and want to be able to use without having to pay for them. And the tools necessary to do that are complicated and it's a good business for them. We also see people utilizing not just different business models, but different content types. So how do you monetize images? How do you monetize video? How do you monetize talk radio? These are uh, new ways of approaching the new business models with new content, and they all open up different adoption curves that can allow a challenger to take over from the incumbents. On Demand has been one of the biggest changes in the entertainment industry, starting from music and certainly now in the film. We grew up expecting that we had to go and watch something in a certain place, whether it was a theater or a television, at a certain time. What's happened now in entertainment is people have the expectation that they can see what they want, when they want it, how they want it, free or paid, and on any device they can touch. Our relationship with that film ecosystem is as a full service distributor, but we really pay attention to the digital delivery world, whether that's ad supported and freely available, free streamed on over 100 devices, on over 110,000 websites and other web partners, or transactionally through your cable system, through iTunes, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, et cetera. However, we can get great films in front of a broad audience with a business model behind it, we have a good business. Traditional uh, media was a price fix restaurant, 
that had one menu at one time. And that the internet was a buffet, varied menus, you could decide what you wanted at 24 seven, come and get whatever you want, or just come and look. Mobile is all that, but we deliver. You could look at some analyst chart and say, oh yeah, mobile is, is getting bigger. But now I'm actually seeing people sharing content that's spreading from an iPhone to an iPad to a desktop to a laptop to, you know, um, and, and the same piece of content is being viewed by people on all these different devices. And, in, and that allows content to go viral across multiple mobile platforms and desktop platforms. Having a seamless content uh, experience across multiple platforms is really important. So for example, you could start at home and on your Sonos, you're listening to say this American life. You then get into your car to go to the grocery store and you, you've, you've paused it as you get into your car and then you start listening to it again. And then maybe you get a phone call and you pause it again. And then you get to the grocery store and you take your mobile device out of your car and you go into the grocery store and you continue to listen to that content. So it follows you wherever you go across multiple platforms and we want that to be as seamless as possible. Well, one of the cool things about what social media has done is it's changed the way that people interact with brands that they care about. So there is two-way communication going on. And that's a very important distinction. If you saw a billboard for some brand, yeah, you saw it and you walked by. There was no interaction with the brand at all. The brand doesn't even know that you actually looked at it. Traditional advertisements are largely being sort of ignored, sitting around the perimeter of a web page. And GumGum uh, found a really effective way to integrate marketing messages alongside co the content the users are actively engaging with. Uh, and as a result of that, we saw um, you know, engagement rates on the order of 10 to 20x uh, what you might see elsewhere. Text doesn't smile back at you. Uh, images do. Users have a very visceral reaction to images. And, that's what we're uh, looking to deliver to advertisers. From a publisher perspective, it's really interesting because we're creating uh, an entirely new revenue stream for them that is purely additive. In radio, which is a one-way broadcast medium, that this is basically a very new thing. So we do, we collect a, a lot of information just about listeners what their preference is, what they like. So what we're looking to do is, is provide a much more fun, um, less invasive, um, and, t and targeted experience, which provides a, a heck of a lot more value um, for both advertisers and makes, it, um, and makes it a lot more valuable for listeners as well. Users are volunteering information, whether it is through social media or whether it is through interactions they have with other users or pieces of content on social media. There's never been a time where users are volunteering as much information about themselves as now. And there is a huge opportunity for media to leverage that, those pieces of information in turning around and serving up the types of content those users might better engage with. The big question is what kind of advertising will be native to social? You can't just put banners or sponsored links onto uh, in a social experience and, and expect it to work that well because it's not native. You're kind of bolting it on. And so we have been focused from the start on having um, the same platform we use to publish all of our content also work for branded content. It's content that's, that is branded content or, or that a brand created it still has to be something that is worth sharing. Advertising should not feel like advertising. It should be content. It should be something that a person wants to engage with. We did uh, a small campaign with Lexus where we had beautiful videos of how their cars are made. And that piece of content was so engaging that something that people were interacting with, which was an advertisement, was actually not something that bothered people, but something that they wanted to share on their social networks. NEA has historically and traditionally been about backing the next generation technological leaders and technological winners. And in digital media, technology still plays a huge role, but there's also the artistic and craft aspect of this. And what we are finding is new leaders that combine an understanding of the technology with an understanding of the art and the craft. And those are going to be an increasing part of our portfolio going forward. Our lives have changed so significantly in just the last three or four years, there are things that we do today that we probably couldn't even imagine about three or four years ago. 
things have changed in at such a rapid pace. It's just phenomenal. 